raise your hand if you enjoy being invited to events. Right, we, we like to be included. Now raise your hand if you like to be the person inviting others to an event. I'm Christy and for me, inviting others is the harder part. I have a difficult time getting out of my comfort zone and inviting people, even my best friends, to events with me. And by events, I literally mean just hanging out. I have to rely on someone else to invite everyone for me because it makes me feel so awkward. And yet, as followers of Jesus, we're told to go and invite. No pressure, right? And we're to follow Jesus' example. Again, no pressure. Jesus would walk up to his disciples and just tell them, come follow me. And those guys would drop what they were doing and follow him. Why did they follow him? Because he asked. Our series memory verse shows how we can truly make an impact by going and inviting, 2 Timothy 4, 5. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Notice that line, work at telling others the good news. That's inviting others to see their potential relationship with God. We can share the good news of what Jesus has done through our own stories and we can make an impact on the people around us. How does this work? It's really simple. You might have a friend that isn't a follower of Jesus. You can tell that friend when it's the right time about how having a relationship with Jesus has changed your life. They might ask you some questions, answer them honestly. And if you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know, but I'll look into it. And here's the best part, invite them to come to church with you or ask them some questions about what they think about a relationship with Jesus. When you do this, you're living as a disciple and you're following Jesus's command in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus tells us to go and make disciples. That means inviting others to be a follower of Jesus. So today, I want you to remember this one thing. When I go, I make an impact. Say that with me. When I go, I make an impact. If we don't get this and live this as Jesus told us to, the message of the good news of Jesus ends with us. If we get it and we understand it and we begin to make it the norm in our lives, the potential for the kingdom of God is unlimited in those around us. The more we live this out as followers of Jesus, not only will we make an impact on those around us that we share Jesus with, but we're gonna grow. This is God's principle of sowing and reaping. As I sow into others through discipleship, I will grow. You know, we grow the most in our faith when we help others grow in their faith. Now, if you're not a follower of Jesus, you might be thinking, oh, I can check out because this is not about me. Wrong. I want you to be open today. Be willing to listen intently and hear how this talk affects you. Give me 10 minutes of your time as you fully listen. We're called to go and make an impact. So how do we do that practically? It sounds daunting. We can look at Paul, one of the writers of the Bible, as an example of going. And we're gonna be reading about his first missionary journey in Acts chapter 13. One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. This is such a powerful moment to start their missionary journey. Paul, who's also referred to as Saul, and Barnabas spent time in prayer and worship, and they were fasting, and they were focusing on Jesus along with some other men with them. And the Holy Spirit led these men to send out Paul and Barnabas to spread the love of God to others. So number one, go when and where the Holy Spirit leads. These guys had a very clear calling from the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't invite us into this mission of going and making disciples and then leave us on our own. He didn't expect us to just fend for ourselves. He gives us his spirit. He lives in us, leads us, directs us, and guides us when we make him the leader of our lives. We have to slow down and listen to him and obey. Now, sometimes that calling isn't as clear as what these guys experience. Sometimes it's just that little, small feeling in the pit of your stomach. And maybe you haven't experienced that yet, but here's what it's looked like for me. One time, I was driving down the road and I saw some homeless people, and they were asking for food. I kept driving, but I had that heavy feeling in my stomach and in my heart. 
Sometimes it, it like physically hurts. And I knew I needed to turn around and help them and show them the love of God through my actions. So I stopped by a restaurant nearby, grabbed some food, and I gave it to them. That's how I've served in my community when I have that feeling. But I've also had that feeling when it came time for my church to build a home for family in Mexico. I kept saying, oh, they don't need me. I have no idea how to build a house. But I had that feeling, that heavy feeling. So I listened and I went and I built a house in Mexico with a team and I had amazing time sharing the love of God with this beautiful family and their kids. You might not know the exact moment when you're being led by the Holy Spirit, but just listen to what he's showing you and where he's guiding you. You might feel it in the pit of your stomach. Paul and Barnabas were going because the Spirit led them to go. You may say, well, I'm just waiting on the Spirit's leading and then I'll go. He's leading you. He's always leading us to live out Jesus' commission to go. We have to listen and obey and go when and where he is leading. Barnabas and Paul were sent out by the Holy Spirit the same way that we are. We must ensure that we listen to him and follow his lead. This should be our norm as followers of Jesus filled with his spirit. We should live by doing as Jesus said throughout our lives. When I go, I make an impact. Say that with me. When I go, I make an impact. I wanna clarify that going and making disciples does not have to be across the globe. It can literally be your best friend, your sibling, your parents, or even that one kid in class that you talk to every once in a while. Making disciples happens around you whether you're at school or on a mission trip in Mexico. Inwardly, you may feel fear. When you look out to those in your life who don't know him, you may think they don't wanna hear or they don't wanna see it. But we have to wrestle with Jesus' words, go. I have to allow him to transform my hard heart to see and sense the reality of the eternity of those I know around me who don't know him. They're on a path to spending eternity separated from God the Father, as well as the fact that they are struggling to live this life on their own strength. This is not about guilting you. This is about facing the truth and reality that Jesus has left his mission in our hands and given us the power to change the world with his love. We can do this. We should do this. He has called us to do this. When I go, I make an impact. So number one, go when and where the Spirit leads. Number two, go and teach about Jesus. Let's look back at Paul and Barnabas' story. They were sent out to share the love of Jesus with others on a mission trip. They sail for Cyprus and travel from town to town across the entire island, sharing the love of Jesus. They reach a town called Paphos, where they met a Jewish sorcerer, a false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He had attached himself to the governor, Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent man. The governor invited Barnabas and Saul to visit him, for he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, as his name means in Greek, interfered and urged the governor to pay no attention to what Barnabas and Saul said. He was trying to keep the governor from believing. I don't know about you, but I would be super intimidated. This guy's literally trying to take on the name of Jesus and cause harm doing it. And the sorcerer is keeping the governor from even trying to hear the love of Jesus and believing in Jesus. That's called resistance. Unfortunately, when you share the love of God with others to make disciples, you're gonna face resistance. Some of you might be resisting listening right now. That's not easy to deal with, especially when it's someone you're close to. So what do you do? Lean on the Holy Spirit for guidance. He's the one that led you to share the good news with that person. He will not leave you to fend for yourself. Ask for his guidance in that situation. And that's exactly what Paul did as he tried to teach the governor about Jesus. Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit and he looked the sorcerer in the eye. Then he said, you son of the devil, full of every sort of deceit and fraud, an enemy of all that is good. Will you never stop perverting the true ways of the Lord? Watch now for the Lord has laid his hand of punishment upon you and you will be struck blind. You will not see the sunlight for some time. Instantly, mist and darkness came over the man's eyes, and he began groping around, begging for someone to take his hand and lead him. When the governor saw what had happened, he became a believer, for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. The governor not only saw what happened, but was astonished at Paul and Barnabas' teaching about Jesus, 
and he became a believer. Don't get sidetracked or off course. Our mission, our cause, is the cause of Christ. Paul stayed on track even as he dealt with resistance. While we don't get insight into how he shared Jesus with the governor before he experienced resistance, we do see the transformation that happens. As we teach others about Jesus through the Holy Spirit in us, we can make an impact on the people around us. When I go, I make an impact. Say that with me. When I go, I make an impact. I want you to understand how important it is to go and make disciples. This isn't some rule that your youth leader made up. This isn't some old thing that the church has always done. This is a command from Jesus to us. I want to read it again for you in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus led the way for us to go and make disciples. He was a friend of sinners to whom he gave the good news and made them his followers. And he has called us and invited us into his incredible mission. As we live this out in our lives, we will make an eternal impact. So I wanna challenge you to commit to living this out. This week, identify one person who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus that you know. Pray for that person every day and begin to share your story of your relationship with Jesus with that person. This is not an option for those of us who are his followers. Should we choose not to go and make the impact Jesus calls us to, we will be living in disobedience. To not go is to ignore those who are lost and the fact that they have no hope of eternal life without Jesus. Our loved ones, neighbors and friends will continue without the hope we have in Jesus. The hope that God the Father sent his son to die on the cross to give them. The hope that Jesus paid the ultimate price for. As we go and make the norms found in Paul's first missionary journey, our norms, we will feel fulfilled as Jesus' followers because of our obedience. We will begin to see God through his spirit and use us to help people step across the line of faith and ultimately have the privilege of baptizing them. We'll see our families and friends and our school transform as people believe in Jesus. When I go, I make an impact. Say that with me. When I go, I make an impact. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much that you give us the ability to share your love with others. We pray that you continue to guide us and allow us to lean on you and your power as we find those people in our life that don't know you. Allow us to lean on you as we share your love with them so that they can fully understand who you are and how they can have an eternal life with you. We pray that you just help us be encouraged to go and to share your love and to invite others into a relationship with you. And if you have not made Jesus the leader of your life and you want to do that with me right now, just pray. Dear God, I recognize I've done wrong, I've sinned, and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to have a right relationship with you. Please come into my heart and be the leader of my life. In your name we pray. Amen. Bye, guys.